Big shit, it's a unique hustle, nigga. Big shit, big shit, big shit, big shit. Name another podcast like this. Check it, check it, check it. It's a unique hustle. It's your boy ECEO, and I'm here with the lovely, amazing, official Miss Jamaica. What's going on? Nothing, nothing. You know my day walk on. I want y'all to stop what you're doing, like, subscribe, follow us on all social media platforms. I mean, Facebook, Instagram, TikTok, you name it, we're on it. Patreon is where you can see our full-length interviews and on our YouTube membership. For some of y'all who like to see the full-length interviews before all of these clips come out, that's where you need to go see it and subscribe. Thank you in advance. Yeah, because I'm going to do about 150 clips. I'm going to tell you that right now. I'm going to clip it to death, so you better be ready. Come on, get that membership, guys, man. Love you guys, man. Thanks for supporting us. Check it, man. Hey, man, it's your boy, ECEO, man. I got a special guest today for y'all. He don't need no introduction. This guy right here, man, every time he come on the show, I'm very excited because at the end of the day, man, you ain't got enough money. I'll just say that. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> <laughs> the road music is in the building. What's up with it? What's, What's going good? on, man? I'm say, good. say, man, it's good to have you back on the show, man. But I'm gonna tell you something, man. I, you put me in my first video, man. You know what I'm saying? I couldn't have been your first. Yeah, it wasn't that my first. Been like your, your, yeah, that was his first. Yeah, I, nah, I, I wouldn't do it. Now, I don't else. believe that one, bro. I'm telling that you, I wouldn't do it. it now, a lot I'm gonna of people ask me. Gonna search that out. Look, no way. I was in that one with uh, Lil Kiki and Al D, but you can't see me. You oh, won't never yeah. find me. Oh, yeah. I wasn't supposed to be oh, yeah. in there. But oh, yeah, about, you, you, you cameoed up in this one. Nah, yeah, yeah, yeah. That's getting ready to drop, you know. So. And that was unexpected, too. You didn't expect no, to be No, I wasn't even trying to do he all that. He just pulled you in it. Yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. They, they, you know, the boy getting a little clout now. Your husband getting a little known. Everybody seeing me. The road got me out here bad. I'm feeling myself. Hey, <laughs> hey, hey, man. You're a legend out here in these streets, man. Especially man. B- before the podcast and after the podcast, you man. know. Man. It's yeah. been it's been it's been a, a a thing where just trying to get used to being able to get the right people on this set so that we could represent the you know the Dallas area right mm-hmm. and, and and when I first started this thing up you came on early man Don Chief came on early man it was certain ones and and I never forget that bro I called you came and we ain't really have a lot going on but nigga we was here oh, 100%. <laughs> nah man uh yeah it, from day one I saw the, I saw the vision you know what I'm saying we had a good conversation I saw the setup and and I remember we talked about where you, you talked about where y'all was going with it and I believed it and now we here you feel man, me it man. definitely been flourishing ever since that you feel me so but that's on y'all y'all put in that work you know uh I see it everywhere y'all traveling moving around I see all the clips popping up everywhere Man, man, I can tell you, man, like, 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 I think you one of them guys that, like I said, platinum artists, is, it, it ain't many of them that's been on this show. That's what I be telling these boys. You know, it's a difference when you're dealing with, uh, you, you a platinum artist, man. You know what I'm saying? How does it feel after all these years to be to accomplish that, man, when some people wish and may or might, might not ever do it? You know what I'm saying? Yeah. How does that make you feel? I mean, it's just one of those things where, like, when you're doing it, you're in the moment, you ain't really thinking about that. You know what I mean? Obviously, you want to have as much success as you want, as you can have. But, you know, in retrospect, you know, looking at it and seeing how a lot of stuff can change, I'm blessed. You know what I'm saying? Because it's hard to, it was all, it's always hard to do these type of things. And it's, in, in this damn time, it's still that way. But I, I just credit it to the quality of the music, you know what I'm saying, and just putting it in the grind. But I don't really think about it like that, you know. You know, when I hear it coming out of y'all mouth, that's when it comes into a perspective. But yeah. when I'm at the crib or when I'm with, with myself, I, I'm just thinking about what I need to be doing as an artist and what I'm creating next, you know what I'm saying. But I will say, you know, it's, it's definitely a blessing to be associated with, you know, some of those titles, for sure. Yeah, because how many years you been doing this now? Man, I mean, I started rapping when I was in high school when I was 17, but as far as actually being in the game and it actually, you know, uh, I basically did my deal while I was at PV, so I was like around 21, 22. Mm-hmm. So I mean, you know, it been, man, I've been, just, we about 15 years in now. So wow. 14, 15 years officially, you know. 13 I- to 15 years, you know what I'm saying, officially, but I've been doing it since day one. In my mind, when I started when I was 17, that's when it started for me. I was yeah. for real from day one. And you've been representing Texas. You've been rep- Look at your shirt you have on. You've oh, been yeah, representing sure, man. Dallas man, and I stuff like that. Man, I can't like think of bro name. Somebody gave me this at the Deep Ellum Fair. Shout out oh, to whoever oh, it was. Oh, yeah, they, they, <laughs> I got booked for the Deep Ellum Fair. did a show, and a fan came and gave me the shirt. Wow. And then this morning when I pulled it out and put it on, I'm like, oh, yeah, for the word, it's for sure. You know? See? Yeah, you know, the, you know the whole album I'm on and the whole phase is all Texas it's right all now. Texas. So this is the perfect shirt. So See, shout out to homie. I can't remember your name, bro, but... 
I'm rocking your shirt. Man, I, I can tell you, like, when you first started out, man, the game was different. You know, people were signing deals and people were doing things that was really, you know, like you had, if you got a big deal, if you got a deal, then you was on. But now it's the independent game so much because of the way things are laid out. Uh, you were signed to uh, E1 or Couch. Or, mm -hmm. Like, like, how did you end up? Did you Are you still with them? Do you deal with them? Or how did you even change the game when you left there? Yeah, so shout out to Couch E1, man. Uh I did that deal coming out of PV. We did a three album deal, so I fulfilled those obligations with the Darrell Music first album, the Get Big album, and then the Silent Assassin Gangster Grill that me and DJ Drummer did. That was the three albums that fulfilled that. Why that whole went home? Yeah, yeah. So we feel that uh, deal. Speaking of that, man, why it's on my mind, man? We, me and DJ Joe, we just put out the other two Gangster Grills that never had hit streaming platform wow. before. We did live, you know, back then we was all live mixtapes and that mm -hmm. pill, so we had never put them on the DSPs. So this year, maybe a couple of weeks weeks ago we officially put out uh the number 23 gangster grills and the cold red uh gangster grills so them out as well but yeah i fulfill them ab them album obligations with e1 and uh we still in talks you know what it's crazy because i'm actually about to double back with them and do really? something special they got something to do i can't really tell y'all what it is but we actually <laughs> to the double back and do something along the lines of uh some of the stuff we did and some of the new stuff i'm doing so you know uh yeah yeah but this is We've been putting it all together independently, and uh, shout out to Music Access. I'm sh I'm rocking with them right now on, on a project that we figured they put out too. So, you know, we're just moving the music around at this point. Man, I can tell you, man. Like, I'm I'm just excited to to see you the way you be working, man. It's a lot of stuff that be happening out here in full, you know, full swing, man. Um, <clears throat> I've been looking at different things that's going on that you really can't. You know, deny like like Jamie Fox and and what he been going through. Wow. Uh, you you know, uh, being from Turo, Texas. You mm -hmm. know, I think about all the stuff, man. You know, uh, but but people, it, it's tough on the internet these days because a lot of times people be want to know so much about your insight. You know mm -hmm. what I'm saying? But a lot of times people are not able to see what you're doing or see where you at with what you got going, whether it be health or whatever. And that's done purposely because people don't be wanting people to know. Mm -hmm. But it's been a tough break. And I just had to say that because it was on my mind. It has nothing to do with you, Duro. Yeah. But it has yeah. everything to do with shouting out the fact that I want to see him get better. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Shout out to Jamie Fox, man. I seen you yeah. with him yeah, when, you, when, when you yeah. came, right before you came the last time yeah, on yeah. here. We were right at the Cowboys game, man. We, you know, we had a sweet together uh, playoff game, and uh, we just kicked it, bro. It was cool, you know. We, we anytime I see him, you know, it's our love, or whatever. But we always connect on the on the same tip that we from Dallas, basically. You know, he from Terrell. When we outside the city, when I see him in LA, that's somebody from Dallas. You get what I'm yeah, saying? Yeah. It's an area when you outside of the state of Texas. Obviously, it's Dallas Fort Worth is it's one together. It, it, everything is all together. So it's all together. I always see him, you know, out there on the West Coast, and you know, we we always connect on the Dallas tip, and we always been Cowboy fans. So man, you know, but uh, that's, that's homie. A, but, but, but being a celebrity and stuff like that and having so many fans that love you, um, whether they met you or not, how do you feel about um, people, what should I say? Not saying be over into your private life because it's not always about clout and not always about, they just want to feel like they're your friend. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? How does that feel to you? Because it's like, I would think it would be a love-hate because then they can cross that border of your privacy. You mm -hmm. know what I mean? You, so how for, does that feel? So for me, uh, yeah, it, it, I so I had this thing where I, even when it come to like fans, you kind of know like the people that been around. Like if they obviously your friends and family gonna mm -hmm. be friends and family, but sometimes you do got fans and people that just supporting. You know, mm -hmm. you know. Uh, so I just I just balance everything. I look at everything. Uh, if I feel like the person is genuine, I know we all humans at the end of the day. You, it's easy to feel for somebody that you. Connect you. You may not miss somebody, but you can connect. You with connect them, with you know? them, right? Exactly. So if I feel that genuine connection, I just treat it the same. You know, if mm -hmm. they was able to get access to me during a certain time, then obviously it was meant for them to get access to me. Especially if they giving me good energy, good words. You feel me? So I balance it like that. I kind of use my discernment. If it's somebody that is giving me love, I might need that from an outside stranger at that moment. You know what I'm saying? Because if they were somehow way, I might check a DM at a certain time, and I and it might gave me the words, the inspiration I needed at that time. Right. So. 
I just kind of balance it all out, you know, and uh, anybody who's close going to be close. They're going to already be connected. So Because it's been that way even before social media, but the social media to me took it to another level because when you're posting <coughs> stuff, people feel like they're they're your best friend when mm-hmm. they don't even know you. But when I think about how it used to be, when you think about Michael Jackson, these people fainting, yeah, crying, yeah, yeah. all these emotions and don't even know this man yeah. because man, of his music. Sometimes I think about what it would be like back if Michael Jackson, they had like social media back then. Right. You know, uh, but man, it's just the times we living in. You know, uh, social media, and internet is definitely a big part of all that. And uh, mm-hmm. I just, like I say, everything I feel like if it's meant, it's meant. And I feel that connection, then you know I'm gonna express that. You know, uh, so I come across a lot of people, like I say, fans and mm-hmm. people just out there that's fans. Some of them friends. Some people don't know me. Some people supporters. Some people be haters. Some people be haters, and then they become your supporter in your face. And you know, you still got to know how to play off that energy. But that's true. That's how do you keep true. your private life private? Because I never ever go on social media and hear nothing about Darrell. He Darrell yeah. is real never, good about it. I never yeah. see um, pictures of whoever you're dating, yeah, 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 whoever yeah, yeah. you broke up with. I've yeah, never yeah, seen yeah. a female come on there and be like, well, he did this, 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 this. Uh, yeah. I've never seen any of that. And That's you've been real. in this business a That's long real. time. So yeah. how do you do that? Man, I just try and connect with real people. You know, uh, you know, I, I, I got real people in my life. And you know what I'm saying? I just keep it at that energy. And I mean, in private life, I, I feel like it's kind of easy. And it's, you know, it could be difficult in this time. But a lot of people put their private life out there. Mm-hmm. When you put it out there a certain type of way, it ain't the moment you put your private like private life out there is no longer private. Mm. So you know the stuff that I feel like need to be private, stay private. You know, but at the end of the day, I live my life pretty openly. So it's like the people who know me, and if you know me, you come across me. It, it don't seem that way, but from social media standpoint, I really try and just put my music out there. Right. You know what I'm saying? Because right. at the end of the day, I try and put everything in the music and then you can get a glimpse of the of me and who I am through the music. You through know what I'm saying? If you want public, if you want private stuff. So I think just having that mindset and then coming in the game right before it was like that, I kind of got a, a ideal and sense of how to live without it. You know what I'm saying? Mm. A certain type of way. But, you know, in these times, anything can become public. Yeah, because a lot of people putting everything out there. Yeah. Some people do it on, on purpose, some people do it unintentionally, but you know, uh, with me, man, I, like I said, I live a real life, so when right. I'm inside life, I'm focusing on that, and that's enough for me, you know what I'm saying? And my fans, I only really feel like I wanna connect with them first and foremost through the music, you know what, mm. what I'm saying? And once I connect with them that way, it's more of a situation to where you, if you listening to the music, you can get a real good glimpse of my private life a lot, especially with a lot of the new music coming, even the old music, even the albums. Like, I talk about a lot of stuff. Mm-hmm. But, you know, a lot of times the fans, you know, everybody wants the bangles from the road. Exactly, you know what I'm Everybody exactly. wants the bangles from the road, but anybody who wants the other stuff, which I have a group of fans like that, hence is why I came with the 6-3 brand and the road brand for the yeah. people don't know. Yeah. To separate the two. Yeah, yeah, because the 6-3 is, y'all want the bangles, I'm going to give y'all 6-3. Mm-hmm. They want the rapper, you gonna get six three. Mm-hmm. You the, the road, you know, the, the you know, the humanitarian, the person, you're gonna get a lot of that more with this brand in the near future. So yeah, I try and put it out in the music. I just try and save it for the music. If, you know what I'm saying? I feel like that's the best way to put it out if you're an artist. Man, I, I really like like I know you and Boosie, you know, I shout out to Boosie. I seen him uh on the Breakfast Club and uh they basically was Boy, hey, they was give, doing what Boosie do, you know. Um, do you ever talk with him anymore? Or would you ever work with him again? Yeah, I pulled up on Boosie uh, last year for his Boosie, uh, Boosie bash. Yeah, she, you did. Boosie, I saw that. Uh, did. I seen you man. over yeah, there. Yeah. That was a picture. Yeah, I flew, yeah. Out, I flew out to Atlanta, uh, went to his I crib, man. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I, I had to, like, when I saw he was doing that, I thought it was a good idea, and I ain't had nothing going on that day. I said, you know what, I'm going to fly out to the A, man. And I flew out to the A, went to the crib, pulled up, had a good time. Just seeing him wild well out, you know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. We kicked it, you know, ate food, kicked it with, with the homies, and, and that's the type of relationship me and Boosie always here. You know, Boosie was the first artist in the industry that embraced me. Like, I was always, when I first came in the game, I was I was, I was was new to the game, so I was kind of like the artist that, when I would see another artist, like, I'll be the one to initiate like what's up this that this that and, and you know what I'm saying kind of introduce myself and kind of start our relationship with, with other artists Boosie was the first artist that ever did that to me like you know I remember we was on tour uh, I had one on a tour it was me Boosie it was like Latoya Lucky and Yo Gotti and like Ace Hood it was a couple people but 
on that tour, none of us had never met each other yet. You mm. know what I'm saying? And like we was somewhere and Boosie like tapped my shoulder, I turned around and it was Boosie, he was dabbing me up. You know what I'm saying? So me and him connected right then and there and like from then on, he was more like, I didn't even look at him like I looked at everybody else in the industry. You feel me? The, the, the few people that was like that, that I didn't, that I had that type of connection with was Boosie and Nipsey. You know what I'm saying? Like, we just had like a certain type of relationship to where I'm like, this this the homie, this bro, you know what I'm saying? I was at Boosie Crib the same week they came and got him, he got locked up. You know, we was mm -hmm. I was at his we was getting ready to record music and yeah, everything. Yeah, so me and Boosie just always had that relationship. So when I mm -hmm. saw he was doing the, the Boosie bash, uh the Boosie gone bad, I'm like, man, I'm gonna just pull up. I'm just gonna pull up. And I That's pulled up dope. to the A, went to the crib. And you know, we kicked it. But you know, uh, anytime I hit Boosie, if I hit him right now to get on the song, he'll do the song. He'll pull up, you know what I'm saying, whatever. So we just kind of had that relationship from day one, and I just keep it like that, you know. That's bro at the end of the day. Well, Boosie, um, I got to ask you this. How can I ask you this? He uh, <laughs> he uh, basically, uh, well, I can say this. Him and T.I. had fell out, and when they fell out, um, basically, uh, they end up patching things back up. And I thought that was, you know, something admirable. Like, what... Um, in the industry, if you get into it with somebody, um, is it a thing where, have you ever seen an issue where you was able to resolve it as men and get past it, even though you might, I think you spoke of it a little bit on Chief was mad at you a little bit, that was about booting me, it wasn't that bad. <laughs> yeah, 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 but yeah. it still was a thing where, you know, how big is that, how admirable is that to, to get past the differences as two men who are known brands and everybody watching, you know? Yeah, the thing with industry issues, man, you know, I done had, Few small ones, you know, on some out uh back, in, but what it is is the artists, they never you really never know each other on a personal level, so you can't really have a real beef. You know what I'm saying? The only way you can really have a real beef with somebody, y'all, it has to be personal for it to be that type oh, of beef. Okay. If it ain't personal, no matter how it's spun or or people try and make it, it's it's almost impossible for you to really feel that energy for real. You know what I'm talking about? I remember, you know, when when people was trying to make me and Hurricane Chris beef over the Holly Berry scene, we had words and we had a situation, but it wasn't personal enough for me to lose sleep on it. It was just like, you address it and then you go to, you ain't even thinking about it because it ain't really real. So with that being said, that's how I'd always felt with me. And I, so I know it's like that with other artists. Yeah. Now, some artists are closer. Like, you know, I can't really speak on Boosie and Tilt yeah, and all because yeah. I know they close. Yeah, uh, my thing is if I'm close with an artist, if I fell out with an artist like that, or if I fell out with a nigga like Boosie, I'ma definitely be on his line. Yeah, you know what I'm saying? It's gonna be something we probably ninety percent chance that we gonna handle that offline. You feel me? In, in real life, you know. Uh, so that's the only way I could see it. You get any, anything else? It, I, it's for entertainment at this point. That's real. Yeah, yeah. You know, a lot of people do it for entertainment. Some people get off on that. Some people don't. But if it ain't a real personal beef, like if we ain't really running to each other in real life and it was something, then it. It's just internet stuff. You know what I'm saying? That's real. I yeah, agree yeah. with that 100%. Because once it spills onto the internet, you, oh, it's, it's hard. It's, 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 yeah, it, it belongs to the people. Then once <laughs> the people get the beef, it's they beef and they create it. And that, it's all about how you react to that. Once you get on the internet, it belongs to the internet. You know what I'm saying? But what I hate about beefs is that with the people, it create beef amongst them. Like, you could have two set of people who never used to argue with each other, but all of a sudden, I'm T.I.U., yeah, Boosie, and then yeah. all of a sudden we beefing too. Yeah, that, I'm like, let, that, that's, that's when they let the people sway them. That's you, right. You know, so when you get swayed by the people, that's when that type of stuff happens. And, and it ain't, I, I guess it ain't that easy to not get swayed by it. I guess if you caught up in it, for me it is, but like when you see it happen, because I be saying stuff that I feel like should never happen. I'm like, damn. Mm. I know oh, that I know. Yeah, exactly. Oh. So <laughs> the only thing I can say is when you get, it be people around an artist and then it be a people around another artist and those artists be influencing the artist. I mean, those people be influencing the artist. And that's what make it a real beef. You know what I'm saying? So sometimes the, the internet get to the people that's close to the artist and then the people that's close to the artist gets to the artist. And that's the way it kind of translate when people be beefing. What? Cause I see some stuff where I'm like, there's no way that this ain't for entertainment or they ain't just, or they done got caught up. You feel me? So I can't really speak I, I on it because I'm good at ignoring I stuff. Know, I know that you don't I know me that. nothing. You Man, good. Bro, I like, see that. My life's too real, Listen. bro. So it's like, <laughs> my life's so real that like, it, it's easy for me to ignore something like that. You know what I'm saying? But when it gets, like when I was talking to Silk the Shock, I asked him about uh, him, Master P and, and Romeo getting into it because this was the time we was interviewing and he spoke about right, it. And that's father and he's and like, son. I would have never let that get out. He really gave me an intimate answer. Like, I hate that got out. Yeah. But they know both of them know that when I say something, and basically, 
they know I mean it, you know. So yeah. it be family. Family can it can be a thing where family comes out and start to oh, speak yeah. on certain oh, yeah, situations because yeah, yeah, yeah. they know you. Yeah. So it's yeah. it, but once it get on the internet again, yeah, ain't I mean, no telling it, where it, the it, hell it's really gonna, gonna go. It be but, a lot of cloud chasing. Time man. it's gonna die down, no matter yeah. what it is. Eventually, something else hotter. Something else something crazy else facts, comes yeah, up facts, and facts. it dies down, no matter facts. how big you think it was. Facts. Yeah, nah, that's it, true. Yeah, I remember we had some stuff going on. Then Dolph died. It just pretty much shut right. everything down. Yeah. I had some. I'm like, man, this gonna go viral. I thought it was the hard, one of the hardest interviews. And then Dolph died. R.I.P. to Dolph. And they were like, dang, it's that. Yeah. Don't even worry about that no more. That's dead. You know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Nah, but that's like way that. more important, of course. But it's like certain things. The internet will be swayed by different situations. It would be. I would think that it would be the same with music. Like if say example you put out music today not knowing somebody big was going to pass away or whatever mm -hmm. and they pass away like a day or two after you put out your music does that affect your your, your music well, sales? That, that would only affect you if you built off like something if you built off a weak brand or you built off the internet where you building like that like me it takes so long to really build music so for instance let's just say I put out music and something like that happened I'm still in the clubs I'm still Talking to the DJs for real. I'm still on the DSPs. I'm still here and there. And if the if your music is strong, it's gonna build. It, you know what I'm saying? It's gonna connect. It's just when the, when you see stuff like that, if, if if something can happen to make an artist's music disappear, the music ain't soul yeah. food. It's fast food. You know yeah, what I'm saying? Yeah. It's just something that ain't gonna stick anyway. Cause there's nothing that can really make. Think about it. Any song that you still listen to today that have been out, Ooh. think about how much stuff didn't happen. Like it, it, right. That's the only thing. So I don't worry about that. I just good try, music. I, I just mm -hmm. yeah. I just make the good music. How, that's and that's how that. important is it for you to be in the clubs making appearances, even well, if you even if you don't like yeah. um, perform or nothing like yeah. that, but just for people to see you when you have something coming out. I still believe in the underground railroad. You feel mm. me? That's what I call it. The clubs. You know what I'm saying? Like. It's, even in this day and time, like I feel, I, I believe in everything. I believe the internet is is one thing. I believe the radio is one thing. I believe the streets is one thing. I believe the clubs is one thing. Mm -hmm. I believe, you know, I, you know, everything is a certain thing. Everything you know? works together. And if you're really true about it, you are gonna try and find a way to hit out them avenues and platforms. Uh, so I still believe in the clubs. I, mm -hmm. I mean, I don't like me personally. I don't leisurely go to the club. I ain't never leisurely went to the club, but my life, obviously being a rapper, I always been in the club. Yeah, you have to. So uh, when I'm putting out music, yeah, I, you know, I, I pull up some spots. You know what I'm saying? Uh, I got a lot of hostings coming up now. You know what I'm saying? And, and it's just it's to break the music, get the music to the people, get it to the DJs. I still believe in the DJs. Uh, so yeah, I think that's very important. Now a lot of new artists that's coming out, they don't even know. They don't even think like that. They, you know what I'm saying? But some of them do. You know, the, and the ones that I see doing that, it worked for them. You get what I'm saying? So I look at it all. I, I call the club route and the street routes. I still I call that the Underground Railroad. That's a way to get your music out. Because the internet, is, that, man, you you know, you kind of got to get lucky on the internet. You mm -hmm. know what I'm saying? And a lot of artists put out music just to think about how they for to make everything happen on the internet. But you know something by going out in the streets and going to Sydney's these real life places, you can control it yourself. You know, you really just gotta believe in yourself, believe in your brand, believe in your music. You know, you gotta be two feet in. With mental illness being such a big, big thing nowadays, like, do you have you ever been to a, a counselor, or anything? Have you had to go through anything that caused you to have to deal with mental illness? Uh, I think we all done dealt with mental illness in our, our, in our in own way. way. Yeah, yeah. But I ain't never really uh, been to a counselor because one for me. My therapy is music. One, one of my main therapy is music. You know, uh, uh, and, and I and and expressing myself through music, uh, working out. You know, what I'm saying, connecting with people I really know. You know, what I'm saying, using the people around me in real life, because anybody can be a counselor. You feel me? Like I can come up here and talk to y'all and, and feel It'd better be, yeah, or feel. Right. Yeah, you know, yeah, what I'm saying. Yeah. So you, you can use the whole world as your counselor. But as far as really sitting down with a therapist, I never done that. Although you know, uh, I'm not against that. You know, yeah. but I want to say I want to say there's a difference between mental illness and mental health. Because everybody needs some sort of mental health, so to say. But when you say mental illness, that has to do with, you know, a lot of your chemical imbalance and really, yeah. you know, you need yeah, medication yeah. or whatever. Yeah. But everybody, a lot of times, go through some sort of trauma, whether, you know, thinking about their mom, dad, parents, things mm -hmm. they went through in the past, a girlfriend, how she, what she did you and you have to get over it. Right. That's really just, you know, mental health, getting your head right and, you know, learning how to move on from that. 
So yeah, 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 yeah. no, you're right. Uh, no, it's been a lot of a lot of different situations where people are bringing that up because of different past things that mm -hmm. happened in one's life, and so we get that a lot on the show. So I said I'm gonna start asking that question a lot of times to everybody because. I, for one, ain't never been to a counselor. You know how I feel mm -hmm. about it. I feel like God is my counselor. I've had this conversation with a lot of people, but and, and, and some people say you're different because you just think different. But I feel like, you know, you got to pull up your big boy draws or whatever and get it get it done. Thanks. But then some people like, but some people been through a lot. Now, we had a lady on here last week that, shoot, I don't know if I was her, I'd probably have to go to a counselor. Mm -hmm. She had a lot going on. So at the end of the day, that's just one of the questions I had, but I want to go over to the music, man. How was it when you, now you got to think back, Dero, when you dealt with uh, 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 P. Diddy and all them in that remix that get big, and yeah. how did that even happen, man? Because I man. never asked you that. Yeah, so, you know, we had All-Star Weekend in Dallas one year. I, I don't, I don't. Uh, yeah, it was snowing. Yeah, snow, it was yeah. snowing. Yeah, that year. That year. <laughs> so, you know, anybody that was coming to Dallas, you know, they, they would always lock in with me, hit me up. One, one day I get a call, about Diddy uh, wanted me to pull up. We had went to K104 uh, and we did Bebe show and Diddy was up there, you know, doing promo. So we, that was the first time we, we had locked in, but like, we so we, I think we changed now at the radio station and then later on that day he hit me and he was just like, uh, pull up. We, we went somewhere, me, him, uh, Mark Cuban, like we went to some little event they had, you know, so I'm kicking it with him or whatnot. And we just kind of just kick it that, that time and I'll start weekend cause the, the stuff was getting canceled because the snow. So yeah, 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 yeah. We kind of just found like our only event and did, and we got cooled in. So long, fast forward from there, uh, probably some months later, I had put out Get Big. I had dropped the Gangsta Grills. Get, get, Grig, get Big was on that Gangsta Grills, uh, number 23. It blew up from there, ended up going radio. It became a big record. And it was probably like top 10 on the Urban Choice at, at the time. And I was just like, damn, it's time for a remix. I hit Diddy. I, I hit him with a text message. I just text him. I was like, hey, bro, my record get big. Top 10 right now. We trying to put the remix together. I really want you on it. Man, he hit me right back. He was like, send it to me. Sent it to him. He heard it. He was like, I'm going to have it back to you tomorrow. And and he sent me back. the No, first he told me, he said, I'm going to have it back to you tomorrow. And then the next day, he, he hit me to actually like write the verse. You know what I'm saying? To write the verse for him. So I wrote the verse. You know what I'm saying? I wrote a hardest verse. You wrote the verse? I wrote the hardest verse, but he didn't use it. He, he didn't, didn't use it. it. Oh, it damn. Because, see, like, I was young and I was I was too Texas on there. You know, I, I wasn't thinking like a New York nigga because he ended up having, like, Red Cafe do it for him. Yeah, and yeah, the yeah. verse he ended up got, got doing, it's hard. You know what I'm saying? Uh, like, and, 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 and it was more on, when I listened to it, I'm like, yeah, this is more like Diddy. Like, yeah. Because at this time, like, now if I write something for somebody, I'm thinking like them. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I'm mm -hmm. like, if, if I'm writing this for so-and-so, I'm thinking like him, so I'm going to write it for him, it's going to translate better. But I was young. I'm writing it like me. You know what I'm saying? I'm writing the hard verse that I would spit, and it was hard, too. You know what I'm saying? I might I might try and find that verse. I might use that one day. But nah, like, I'm, I'm thinking like that, so I sent it to him, and he was like, this, he was like it's hard, but it, it don't sound like me. So then, you know, Red Cat, they did it. Next day, though, they sent the verse sent over. The verse Boom. Over. I was like, damn, I got a Diddy verse. And then, you know, from then, I, I went and got Gotti on it. I just hit it. I, I met everybody through relationships. E1 couldn't even put together this remix for me at first. They didn't even clear this remix because it was mm. bigger than the remix they did. They had gave me another remix with some E1 artists. Shout out to the people that was on it, but it just wasn't that. I was like, nah, I, I can do better than this myself. So I went and got Diddy, uh, Drama, Yo Gotti. Mano. Uh, Mano, uh, uh, Bun, Bun B. B. Yeah, yeah. Uh, who else? Yeah, I don't know. So everybody that you reached out to said yes. Out, yeah, yeah. yeah. Everybody, everybody did, said you know, yes. Charlie Lowe was on that host. Wait a Charlie minute. Lowe. Wait a Charlie. minute. I got to say this, man. I talked to son yesterday, man. So I, I'm a, listen, man. Man, hey, so how was Junior. it, man? Hey, hold on. Let me Charlie speak Lowe on Charlie Junior, man. Charlie Lowe, man. Hey, that's that's my dog. First of all, me and Charlie Lowe, we might got about four or five songs. Really? Out and we shot videos. So one time I pulled up to the A. Shorty Love was the type of nigga I pull up to the A. I'm shooting just a regular video. I, we did a song for a mixtape. I'm like, hey, bro, I'm in the A. We did this song on the mixtape. This ain't even a song. I'm just a song on the mixtape. Where you at? He pulled up on me in the A. We somewhere in somebody hood in the A just shooting his verse. And he pulled up on me and Walker did a song. He pulled, like, Shotty Lowe was one of them niggas that'll real. pull up on you for real. You get what I'm saying? Same thing go to TV said. Mm. He'll pull up on you for real. Like, you in the city, he gonna pull up and no matter where you at, he gonna really pull up. It ain't one of those, oh, I'm gonna pull up and you don't hear from him. Nah, he pulling up. So shout out to Shotty Lowe. He pulled up. We probably shot about three or four videos. So, you know, anytime I was in the A, bro, like, you know, I, I went through a spot, you know, out there in uh, uh in Bankhead. I've been to, you know, I was I, I was fucking with bro heavy. I'm born home. Heavy. 
Yeah, yeah. Yeah. So yeah, you know, we he just always showed love, but it was different. It's only certain people I could really everybody had always showed me love, but it, it was certain diff- people that did it on different levels. Shorty Lowe was one of the ones that really pulled up. We did multiple songs, multiple videos. You know people fucking with you when they come in to your videos, pulling up. I ain't never paid for a feature in my life. Wow. Ever. You know in what I'm your saying? life? Ever. Not mm. one time. And I never did features with any, everybody in the industry. I ain't never paid for one. So that's really off respect. Like that's I, real if respect. I, when I do features for somebody for free, it's because I respect who you are and I respect your artistry. That's how I want it. I, I used to tell myself, if I can't get an artist for free, then I need to keep working. You know what I'm saying? Because I know, I know if you if you really on your shit, like the artist gonna fuck with you. Like Jay Z do only free verses. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. But you gotta get to the level, you know what I'm saying? You exactly. gotta get to that. He ain't gonna charge you for no verse. But if you get to the level to where so if you're an artist, you wanna earn that. So that's how I always looked at it. So but I I do know it's a difference. Like it's one thing to get somebody on your verse, it's another thing for them to do the verse and come do the video. Video, yeah. That's a whole nother thing. That's a whole, <laughs> so when when this like Diddy when oh, so Diddy, Diddy, that video. So when I went to the A, it was BT Award weekend. Uh I hit Diddy and it was crazy because I'm like, I, I know bro ain't gonna do the video. I won't even be mad. You know what I'm saying? Cause he did the verse for me and everything. But I was just, I was just, I, I'm throwing a Hail Mary. I'm just gonna text him, fuck it, why not? I got his number. Hit him. I'm like, hey bro, I'm in the A. We 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 finna shoot the video. I hit everybody else on deck. You know what I'm saying? Uh I they we were shooting it, but I just didn't expect to get Diddy. So I text him. He's like, where you at? Man, I, when I say Diddy pulled up in like an hour from when I text him and told him. He was already dressed and everything. I mean, obviously, it was stuff going on, so yeah. he was already in that mode. Man, I shout out to Mano. Mano, my nigga. Hold on. Mano, that's a bad nigga. Right now. Mano, my nigga, bro, but he a real nigga. Cause, like, <laughs> he, we were shooting a video, and I had came out of my pocket to pay for this video. It, was, it cost a lot, but my label, he wanted to pay for this because yeah. they didn't use this remix. Right. So I had to come out of my pocket all on the spot in the A. You know what I'm saying? Now, I didn't have to pay none of the artists, but I had to pay for everything on the spot. You know, when you're doing something right then and there, mm-hmm. it's going to cost more. It ain't planned out. Exactly. I'm like, it was a dude named Rage or something. He was like the top director, and I had to pay, you know, he hit me with a crazy price. He like, right now in the A, and you want this, this, and this? Well, if you're gonna do this, it's gonna be X amount. B- and and he said just, it was BT Award it was Weekend. It was BT Award Weekend, and I, I'm like, fuck it, I gotta do it. Like, I can't, you know what I'm saying? So I, I did it, and, I, and then, so when Diddy showed up, Mano was shooting his verse, you know what I'm saying? But like, Diddy was just like, hey man, I gotta be in and out, but, so like, when he came, nigga, the whole thing stopped. We had to stop Mano's part, yeah. we let Diddy shoot his thing, but man, Mano wasn't tripping though, like, cause at the end of the day, you know, Mano was another nigga I've been rocking with and locked in with. Real hard nigga, and, man, and, and, and I like Diddy Mano. when came, like, it, it really brought the whole thing together, cause I'm like, damn, baby was there, everybody was there, and we and we was just like, oh, this shit for real now. So it kind of turned up the whole shoot, cause now we really believing in the whole thing, cause it was one of those things where we just fit to fly through it and get out. Everybody want to go to their parties. Now nah, this became an event at this point. We all here, <laughs> so I never, I never forget that. And, and and to me, to this day, like Diddy was just a real nigga for doing that. Like he could have. He could have asked for X amount of money. He could have, you know what I'm saying? He could have did it away, but he pulled up and showed, showed love, you know what I'm saying? So that was a big moment for me to really let me know where I stand in the industry as respect. That, that's yeah. when I knew I really that's had dope. respect yeah. in the industry mm-hmm. when people was doing that. Because like I say, I'm an artist. I know it's one thing to to do a verse, but it's a whole other thing to pull up a video, especially at, at this type of level. So when that happened, that's how I used it. I was like, okay, this money was well spent. You feel what me? about it was, it Bon B? Bon B a stand up dude. Oh, bon B just stand up. He well, was there. Yeah, he was there for sure, you know? And everybody met Diddy at that shoot that was there. Like, that was the first really? time like, I met him. Drama met, like, Link Gotti, uh, uh, got, uh, Bon B. Everybody at that shoot, probably outside of Mano, because Mano from New York. Right. Think he, you know, they was already locked in or whatever. Everybody had just met Diddy, uh, Diddy at that shoot. Wow. So, you know, a lot of people locked in from that moment. They Niggas started becoming Ciroc boys <laughs> right after that, you know what I'm saying? So I, I was glad about that. I'm like, okay, I created something where other niggas was able to eat from that, you know? So it was just a fun time, you know? And, and that was another thing. I was having fun at the time, you know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. I, I never, I looked at it like, okay, I'm gonna invest in myself, but I'm also have fun doing this. So how was it working with uh, uh yo yo Gotti, the, you and him? How did you guys even link on that tour? Same same one, one with Boosie, me, Gotti, and Boosie, Latoya Luckett, and Ace Hood. That was my first tour I went on. Okay, and it was crazy because this was a weird tour. It was like we we it was an early morning tour. We did shows early in the morning at school. We was like in the uh, North Carolinas. We was in that Midwest. And we was going from city to city doing schools 
like high schools, um, maybe some colleges too, I can't remember, but we was doing early morning shows, so the shows was like 7.30, 8.30 in the morning. Big shows though, but it was it was, it was was it was called a Russ Part Tour or something like that. It was something that had to do with the radio and the schools, and we all did that. So that's, that's a different, because you know, you doing, we doing nightclubs at night, and normally when you're on tour, you got the whole day to sleep and do all that stuff. And then you're doing evening shows and night clubs. Yeah. Well, we was doing night clubs like hosting, but then we'll have to get up early and go do performances at 7.30 in the morning. Yeah. So we was all going through that tour. And it was, we was all going through. We, none of us was really feeling that, but we all went through it. So we kind of, I think we all kind of bonded during that tour, you know, because yeah. we saw each other every day. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? And we was all grinding. And I remember Yo Gotti, he, he had his whole team. with well, I learned a lot from Yo Gotti because the way he was moving, he had his whole team with him. Like you could see him in hungry mode. Yeah. They was, they was, they was on it. I was going solo with my small team, and it, for me it was just, okay, I'm coming out of Dallas, I'm just now getting some exposure, I'm just gonna go rock every show. That's my mindset, and that's what I was doing, rocking every show. God and them headed, they mindset was, nigga, we got a whole team, everybody from Memphis, and at the shows we got everybody passing out stuff, this, this, and that. So that's when I started implementing that, you know what I'm saying? Cause I was just, okay, homie, you know, grinding. So I got to see the early stages of Yo Gotti. You know what I'm saying? So seeing that and then, you know, seeing homie trans, transform and keep growing, you know. So I, when I see him, I'm like, I remember bro was really putting that shit together. That's so, hard, you know, I, Yeah, man. I got to see that. So Being a young dude like he was, did you ever see, you know, the way that he flourished? The way that, look at how he is now, the people that he's had to come oh, under. Oh, yeah, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. That's so, what I say. With the way you so seen I, him moving then, yeah, you could I, see I that in every him. step because it was different. I always ran into, God, is another person that I always show love. You know, we came, we, he was on my hood bitch finish video. We shot that in Dallas. I think we even shot that Big T. We might have shot his part at Big T. Or we shot <laughs> we shot his part in Deep Ellum or something. Man, him shot a video in Miami. Gotti, I, we did a lot of stuff. We got man, Gotti got a bunch of records too. So I look at the it's certain artists where I got like a lot of records with, and we shot videos. And when I think about it, I'm like them the artists who's really fucking with me the, the most because. Like I say, it take a lot to do that. You know what I'm saying? Uh, motherfuckers ain't just pulling up for videos for the free. No, you know not what I'm at saying? all. Like unless they fuck with you. That's you know? real. And, and, and so Gotti was one of them. And I kept seeing him over the years, so I saw just you know the elevation. And yeah. Like, even when you bring him up now, I think of back to that tour. I'm like, I remember bro was really putting it together Grinding with his, with his like team that. and his brothers and everything. So yeah, shout out to Gotti. Man, I think that like I said, that's that's live, man. Like when I look at look at you and and I think about the summertime coming now and I think about the time it was when you did beat up the block with Boosie and man we gonna ever get another banger like that when the summer jumping off cause y'all niggas was out here making a nigga feel like it was going yeah, down yeah, man yeah, you know yeah. think about it think of he had nah, just well, come home he had just got to the crib yeah, and, you, and, and you know what's crazy is right before he got locked up before that I was at his crib when we was recording yeah, 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 yeah. Did a, Boosie did an ice cream paint job verse and everything he never came out Fez took his computer we was working Damn. on some other stuff the week boom they took the computer, so it was crazy that as soon as he got out from that, that was the first thing we did. We locked up, we locked in and did beat up the block. You know what I'm saying? Same thing. As soon as I hit him up, he was feeling that record too. I could just tell by how he delivered the record, how he did deliver the verse. Then, you know, some months later he came back out, he came to Dallas, we shot the video, and uh we just had a good time doing it. So oh, but speaking of that question, man. You know I played you something before this interview. Yeah, 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 yeah. That's that's what that is. Yeah, that's yeah, what's yeah, coming yeah. this summer. Yeah, yeah, no, no, that was <laughs> hard, what, yeah. hard, hard, but yeah, 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 I'm yeah. talking about you and Boosie. Boosie but. Oh, yeah. You know, me and Boosie got uh I got an unreleased record I ain't put out. Me and Boosie also put out another record called Heavy. We we put yeah. out yeah, we, we yeah. yeah, we got a, we put out a record called Name Ring and we got something unreleased. Uh, I'm gonna go out to the A. When I went out to the Boosie Gone Bad, I was supposed to actually come back that following week and, and record with him. But you know we got to moving around. But Boosie is one of those one of those niggas I could pull up anytime and we're recording. We'll actually get the work done. I want but, that banger back, man. I, I want I want one yeah. of the bangers. I yeah, know y'all yeah. is gonna yeah, be nah, hard. We got that chemistry, bro. Like when you know what I'm saying. I I know how to make a record with Boosie, and he know how to hop on a record if I put it together for show. It's just gonna translate. So we that just gotta we just block. gotta get in there. We just it gotta had, get in there. It had like Jay Cruz at the front of that whole 979 be the local. Yeah, yeah. They yeah, come yeah. in that whole hard, we man. Shot some stuff at the fair. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I come into the fair, but I'm just showing it just had that 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 summer Dallas feel. Yeah. We could have jump it out. And I think I heard the other one. I I, I can't wait. Whenever that whole drop, I'm a, I'm on it. You know what I'm saying? Nah, one hundred percent. One hundred percent. Like I uh yeah, that's what I'm on right now. But yeah, man, Boosie, we just got that chemistry, bro. You know what I'm saying? Man. We gonna always have that chemistry, and uh, we gonna always make hits when we get together. Let's talk about Star Baby, man. The album coming, man. Yes, um, sir. 
let's just let's just let's just talk about it for a little bit. These songs that we've been hearing, man, the ones that, um, man, that what that sample of ESG gotta go. Yeah, listen, man, <laughs> and what and, and with everything that? that ESG going through right now, man, you know what I'm saying, like. Perfect timing because when I shoot, I'm 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 gonna hit him up and talk to him about that. I'll be texting him back and forth. Okay, yeah, tell so him. I'm gonna te- text him. I, I, I ain't talk with him, bro. So you know, you know, let him know that you know I definitely want to. Co- man. Yeah, I want to connect with him, and and I and I and I love doing that sample because I I love doing certain samples to to shed that light on them for one, and then for two, these were some of my favorite records. Mine too. You know, so with that being said, I, I haven't got to connect with ESG. I think we did some show. We did a show way back. But we never really got to lock in, you know. Yeah. Like I done locked in with a lot of other yeah. people, so I'm glad that you know we got somebody mutual like yeah. you. Yeah, yeah. I, I definitely would like to, you know, what I'm saying, have a conversation with him. Man, he's hard, man. When it comes down to just a good dude, man, and he been going through a lot lately. But at the end of the day, that right there put a smile on his face, man. Cause yeah, that's showing love. And that's I 100%, paying homage, man. And I and I, I 100 like real talk. I want you to connect it. I'm you know gonna what connect I'm bro, for, for real. For real, and it'd be good, like I said, to do it now because he, you know, it'd be good to hear from you. Yeah, you know what I'm saying. That's mm-hmm. a, that's what that's what it's all about right yeah give him some um, motivation something to, yeah something to, something to hold on to bro that's the that was big so how did you come over i know what the song is about you know what i'm saying yeah, 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 yeah. But, but like like what put you in that vibe you was just feeling good yeah so you know <laughs> I, the album the star baby album needed some soul food like it, it's a lot of bangers on there and, and and i wanted to balance out and that was one of the records i always say soul food fast food because that's what it is you know you know, sometimes with an album, you know, you gotta have that, that those 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 substantial records, mm-hmm. the records with the substance stuff that's giving you a little insight. Once again, that's one of the records that's giving you a little insight on uh, on the road. That's that's probably uh, you won't hear in the from the six three stuff or the bangers. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? So it was. I've been putting together this album for a minute. You know what I'm saying? I'm real proud of this album because Should of what be. it stand for. It stand for what I wanted to stand for. It's it's a it's this is a specific project this is a very important project to me you know the whole goal is to is to put the to put the world on the on on what texas is and always been but to the forefront once again mm-hmm. and, and it's to combine it's to combine dallas and houston out of texas bring it all together but dallas and houston at the same time you know it's, that's dope you no, know, I got features on there. You know who I got on there? I got Paul Wall, Sauce yeah, Walker, yeah. Zero, Tom Tom, Young Nation. So it's like a Dallas Houston everything. Every producer on there is from Texas. Digi Norm did half the album. Hey, that's too, my boy. Too much, out. too much did some tracks on there. Q Smith did some tracks on there. But it's all how da- many songs? Uh, it's probably like fifteen on there. You that's know, yeah, yeah, yeah. Q, and you know, it's all Dallas Houston producers. It's all Texas everything. You know what I'm mm-hmm. saying? But it's worldwide Texas. You get what mm-hmm. I'm saying? It's it's what I like. See, I tell people all the time, like when I I love. I was just in Houston a few days ago. Yeah. And uh, on 97.9 in the box, they they had they played a Cali. They had like a Cali run a playlist, like you know, just Cali songs. But I tell people that all the time, it translates because I like when I hear a Cali record from a Cali artist, and it's authentic. People be thinking that when you make something like that, it's gonna be just in that place you make it. But really, the whole world like hearing that. When you you can go anywhere in the world, you you, you can hear uh, tipping on four foes. You get what I'm saying? Damn. Still tipping a lot of stuff. You get like, but they love when you come with the authentic music and the authentic sound. Just like Texas, just like California, Atlanta. So my goal with this album is to encourage more of our Dallas and Houston and Texas artists, and especially our Dallas artists. DFW artists to really get back on our sound, get back yeah, on our yeah. ways, the stuff that we can actually own. You get what I'm saying? That's gonna, that's how the only artists that get on from the city and from the Metroplex are the ones that's ripping. It, when you really think about it, the new artist that's popping right now is Big X the Plug. For sure, Big X the Plug. Big X the Plug rep Texas. Texas. Yeah, this whole rapping. tour right now is called "Don't Mess with Texas." Everything mm-hmm. about him, he got a song called "Texas." When you really think about it, a lot of artists don't really do that. They no don't more. do no, that. But the artists that always stick. Whether it's somebody like myself, somebody like a Big X to plug, even when you're talking about a Mo Three who rep Dallas, even when you're talking about a Trap and Yellow who rep Oak Cliff, even when you're talking about, I'm talking about the people who go out to the world and people know, it's the people who repping where they from. You know what I'm saying? It, it Why don't lot. more people do that then? Because what happens is uh, a wave of catch, and everybody feel like to get on, you got to create that sound. So if you're from Texas and Atlanta sound turn up or Chicago sound turn up or wherever mm. everybody gonna go to that sound mm. or Memphis sound turn up everybody gonna go to that instead of not 
realizing that you got a way better chance than being from Texas, a place where we really got culture. See, some places don't got culture, so they got to do that, or they feel they right. got to do that. We really got that shit got here it. in Texas. So you got a way better chance of making it and sustaining and making a name for yourself and, and having success by being from where you from and expressing that and putting that out in the music. But most new artists just catch whatever wave. It's the Chino the Chicago niggas on. Niggas in a lot of niggas in Texas gonna be sound, the new artists gonna be trying to sound like the Chicago niggas or the Memphis niggas or the Atlanta yeah. niggas. And I'm here to be like, hey, bro, this 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 is a way to do it for, mm -hmm. for sure. And an example of that is a nigga like Big X the Plug. That's because he he one of the newest artists to come out right now. Right, and he making a real wave, yeah. and he repping. You get what I'm saying? So right. I just the whole point of me making a Star Baby project is to put people out here into that mind frame, and then to put the people out in the rest of the world, giving them that Texas sound that they love. You go. That's so yeah, that's what it is. Uh, so let's talk about uh, Never Let Me Down. You know, I know what that. That's a good yeah, feeling yeah. too. I, I ain't so, felt it in many many years, <laughs> but. Yeah, that one right there is That's more. actually going to be for Texafonia. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Shout out to Afro Man. Afro Man, uh, you know, he out there from Cali, man. He he, he over at Music Access. Shout out to A-Dot who connected that. We just... Who shot I the just video? Uh, we, 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 we ain't shot it yet. We okay. about to shoot that. Because I, no. I saw a no, sneak that's that. peek or oh, I was in the studio. On, I was okay. in the studio. That was just, yeah, some, you know, content we created in the studio. But uh, uh, shout out to A-Dot. That was just coming across a legend that I, I always liked. A rare legend, you know what I'm saying? He a rare uh, legend that make his own sound, and he got a court fan base. He got a nice fan base. But I came across, and I was just like, I can't come across Afro Man and not do a record. Yeah. And if we're gonna do a record, I'm gonna do a smoke record with yeah, him. Yeah, yeah. And we just made a hit. So that's just in. That's just something we for to build up. But I'm also working on this Texafonia album that I've been working on for a minute. That's definitely gonna be on that. That ain't gonna oh. be on Star Baby. That ain't gonna be on Star Baby. Nah, 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 that ain't gonna be on Star Baby. Why do you call it Texafonia? Uh, Is it California, Texas? Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's, yeah, that's yeah, what yeah. I was thinking. Yeah, 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 I just, yeah, yeah. just wanna make sure. Yeah, yeah, cause you know I spent a lot of time in Cali, you know what I'm saying? Right. So, you know, for the last 15 years, I've probably been living in Cali as much as I've been in Texas. So I'm, my 6 Street project and all that, that's mostly done in Cali. Cali. We're all Cali producers. It's more of a Cali sound and up tempo. It's kind of different. But, you know, merging the two, Together, that's been my lifestyle, so it's something I can really express. So I've been working on this concept and this project called Texafonia for a minute, and uh, you know I'm excited about that. So that's probably gonna come out in 2024, and uh, you know that's gonna. Be I meant to ask you how many um, songs on your Star Baby album is gonna have six three compared to the row. None of them. All None of them is the row. All yeah. of them is the row. So, right, so Star Baby is finna be like okay, I'm glad you I'm glad you said that. Star Baby is finna be the last the row project that's like this. The last one. It's the last one like this. Like, like this. where you, you finna get the row the rapper. From after the Star Baby album, you forget the row the artist. And the mm. person, it's gonna be a whole different wow. thing. Really, the, the the road that people like the rapper, y'all gonna get that from in six three. In six, three. yeah, yeah, six three is gonna be the rapper. The road is gonna be the artist. Y'all got some whole other stuff going on with the Duro brand. I'm taking that to a whole nother space. So this is the last Duro album that'll be f what y'all used to hearing from Duro. But six three gonna still give it to us. Six, it's three not gonna like you just you. gonna leave not, your yeah, fans nah, high exactly, and dry. Exactly. Nah, I'm just directing y'all to where. I, you know what I'm saying? How everything gonna be? Yeah, how everything gonna be? Cause I always had fans from my first, from my very first album. I always had a split fan base. Mm -hmm. My first album was self titled The Road Music. Uh, obviously, you know you had the hit songs on. You had Wire to the T. You had Ice Cream Paint Job. Walk that walk, walk, that walk. Trunk Bang. You had all the bangers on there. That attracted me a whole. That's that attracted me on mainstream audience. But when my album went out, I I, I, I attracted a whole different audience. For, for everything else that was on that album mm -hmm. and that audience hated these songs like really I, the bangers out of they just hated it they didn't really fuck with it so I always had two group of people is we want you to do this and I had another fan base that say we want you to do this this is what we want from you what group is larger uh, obviously well the row music the row brand is the bigger brand but what people been wanting yeah, the most is 6-3 oh okay yeah cause 6-3 yeah. is the rapper that's the, the rapper. bangers you right. know what I'm saying so it's really like if you but the the row brand what I'm going with the the row brand after this you think that's it's what's gonna, gonna be yeah cause it ain't gonna really be about numbers with that it's gonna be the substance of that you get yeah, what I'm saying yeah. that's gonna be like that's gonna be the your that's legacy gonna be, what you wanna leave yeah yeah that's gonna be live being the road that's gonna be you know what I'm saying you know, uh, 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 that's gonna be the road of businessman. That's gonna be the road of humanitarian. That's gonna be the road the true the true artist. 
And 6'3 is just gonna be the rap nigga. <laughs> the rapper that the, you know what I'm saying? And that's cool too. I like doing both. It's who I am. You know what I'm saying? So I just express it to the fans because that's the only way I can make it make sense. Make sense. You know what but saying? are you but, confusing them too? Nah, nah. I mean, nah, nah. I've been brand, you know what? I've been branding it for so long. You've <laughs> been People, doing it that way. And, and honestly, it's gonna be. This is where it's starting to separate. You'll understand it when you see it. It's going to be pretty obvious because I'm saying it. So You're saying my a fans, lot. I know. Yeah, so it's like I'm I'm saying it. They're going to understand it when they hear it. Everything that the, when you want the bangers that you, the people that like from me, you're going to know to go to 6'3 because that's all I'm giving you for it. Okay, day. but on your Instagram, are you going to separate it too on your Instagram? Because you have, you, yeah. you change your Instagram to 6'3. I changed to 6'3 because that needed more branding. Uh, but uh, are you, you know, going to do a Duro? I might, I might, I might. You so know you can separate yeah, it even yeah, I, more? Because it's getting to that point now. Right. You know what I'm saying? I, once I, once I drop my first 6'3 album, which will be later this year, the Unlock Project, that's when I'll probably get into that. You know what I'm saying? But it ain't to confuse the fans. It's really to let them know, man. I, you know, the fans really, uh, they really been, uh, uh, they de they deserve what I'm for to give them. You know what I'm saying? I got a lot of people that been holding me down over the years, publicly and privately supporting mm -hmm. my music. You know what I'm saying? I've been doing, I'm blessed to say that since 2009, I've been doing shows since then that been from my fans in the States, out the States, out the country, this and that, low key, private shows, public shows, all type of these. And, but all these people collectively have kept my brand alive. So now for to really get them what I feel like they deserve. You man, know? I want to ask about that steel, man, just uh, because the way you, the way you, you know, the, the, the fat bees, fat bastards, I want to call them, uh, uh, the uh, Tom Zillas, you know, the DSR movement, mm -hmm. man, like the, to show them that, that, that love like you did, you know what I mean? Like, cause you guys, you know, like y'all here together and you show that unity, man, like, what made you come up with that song, and, and how did you just, how how did you even you know just layer it? How did you how did you put it together? So shout out to Digi Norm. That was actually, that's my boy Digi. Yeah, he was there that Norm, night, bro. This, man, Digi Norm on Digi Norm on one right now. You know he uh I, coming from PV. Like I, I always tell this story because it's my favorite story to tell. <laughs> like how how Norm really came up. Like I met Norm at PV, and I he Q Smith cousin. Q Smith was already a polished producer, dope. Norm T, I, we was out one day, we was passing our flyers. It was my sophomore year at PV, and it was his freshman year. So we went to the freshman campus, passing out CDs, music and everything to the freshmen, whatever. And Norm T came up to me, and he was just, he was excited. He was just telling me he make beats or whatever, this, this, and that, he would make beats. So, you know, we, we went back to, you know, the room. I was like, I right, bet, let's go hear him now. And like, he played like some beats. And when I say these beats were so terrible, like I never heard nothing <laughs> so bad in my life. Like, it was just not good at all. I couldn't even believe like, so, but but I liked his energy though. I liked him because he was a rapper too. So when and he was telling you, he loved to dance. Yeah, and he he, he loved to dance. Everything. But at this time, he was just like he rapped too. And Q Smith had, was like, yo, then my cousin rapped too. And then I heard him rapping. I was like, shit, I like I like his energy. So I was like, fuck it, you ain't really got to make beats. Come rap. We prime time click. I had that boom. But you know, over the years, he started making beats, and then it it, it came to a point where he started making dope beats. I'm like, okay, we can rap on that. But then he just kept going, boom, boom, boom. So now 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 he he a super. Producer for yeah, like yeah, yeah. he 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 at the left. So I like telling that story because I like the climb. But the way it climbed. he was always, you know what I'm saying, it was always there. So now, most of the time, I'm out like he did half the album. I really yeah. be wanting, you know, Norm to do pretty much almost everything I be doing when it comes to a lot of stuff because, you know, I want to keep that, you know, what we always hear because you know I mean? he knows you. He knows exactly what you like yeah. and what you and, want. And, and that's easier. another thing. We we tap in. We go right, right to it. So when we lock in, we easy. Like the hits, we even still that was a that was actually a norm concept. Norm was just like, hey, you know what I'm saying? Because he was like, he made the beat. I had heard it a long time ago. I hadn't came up with nothing. And he was hit me. He was and he was like, you know what I'm saying? We come up with a record, putting the steel in between. When just him coming up with that concept, it was easy for me from there because I just filled in. I was just like, when he he was basically saying steel, everything that's in between the hook, just steel. Yeah, making that the concept. I, would, I filled in everything and in the verse it was just easy but when me and Norm lock in we normally hit the target we just we go straight to like we can make a hit right away we don't really got to experiment we gonna come up with an idea we gonna make it happen the boys the boys getting quiet record you know what I'm saying well, I just played for you that's the new that's single hard, man. you know what I'm saying they, that's, that's, that's the one we just went in there boom did it record done you know what I'm saying beat up the block same thing like 
Japanese, we just get we we just got chemistry, you know what I'm saying? So I'll be wanting to keep polishing that. And, and Norm, he'll he'll smart mind. He he ain't just a beat maker. He'll produce it. He'll produce. So and he and he'll Swiss Army knife. So he he do it from every angle. He 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 DJ. He a real DJ. He done been my hype man, BT awards, did high levels, low levels shows, small shows to the to the award shows. He was my dancing videos. He make the beats. He done been a rapper. You know what I'm saying? A uh, 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 and So he done he done he done he done, he, done, he, done, he the only person I know that done played that many and wore that many Rose. hats mm -hmm. at, a, at a real level though, not just like. Like now, he a real DJ. Mm -hmm. He a real producer. He a real artist. He a real engineer. He can. You do know everything. what I'm saying? He a real, you know, dancer. He a real hype man. You know what I'm saying? So he do all of them at a high level. He the only person in my life I've ever met like that. Wow. So you know what I'm saying? That that's he he like the only person mm -hmm. out of prime time click that that well not the only person because everybody doing prime time click is a different entity. Is people doing different things? But from the artists and from from the day ones. He he's still progressing, so yeah. I'm like putting a lot of light on Norm. I like you know that what I'm man. I'm like putting a lot of night because I I still want to see what he's gonna continue to do. He still ain't at his peak, mm. man. You know what I'm saying? Well, and, and and just how much DSR mean like like working with those guys? <laughs> ah, DSR, they man, DSR the reason I rap, bro. Like it, it go little flip. So I. I, I, I always liked the music, but what inspired me to actually start rapping was out the Texas movement, which is how everything come full circle, which is another reason why I'm doing Star Baby. Because that's the reason why I even rap. Wow. Uh, you know, I fell in love with the the, 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 the SUC movement, more so Lil Flip, that made me fall in love with Swisher House, that made me fall in love with DSR, and DSR actually made me jump off the porch to rap because they was here in <laughs> Dallas and, and I would see these niggas. These niggas would pull up at our school. I went to Lancaster. These niggas come up there freestyle. Now you see these niggas at uh, uh, South by I'm not South by Southwest, uh, Sixth Street, uh, Texas Relays. I just used to always see these niggas for real. And mm -hmm. so the trend, it's, it's different when you see it in real life, especially when you're a kid. I'm a teenager seeing this. So that's what inspired me to actually wow. jump off the porch and like, fuck it, I'm for the actually rap wow. and have fun with it. You know what I'm saying? That's what DSR means to me. You get what I'm saying? So if it, if it, if that don't happen, you don't get a Duro. You know what I'm saying? And, and I and then you don't get a Young Nation. Wow. You know what I'm saying? I was you, about to ask you about them because um, they, they I finally got them on the show. We had a great time. Your name came up. You uh, you gave them a deal. Yeah. Uh, you, oh yeah. You blessed their game. Um, so. And they and, and they they had a lot of love for you. Just. Explain to me because that's the only one that I know that you signed, right? Yeah, yeah. Like, uh, explain to me why did you they were the anymore? only one, and, yeah, and yeah, it was different people. But you know, other people, I signed a lot of my homies. You okay, know what I'm saying? I got and you. A couple people out in Cali that were the homies. You know what I'm saying? We did some different situations. Uh, with different people, it, 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 it's a it's a it's a history. It's a it's, it's, it's I didn't a, know you had signed. It's a lot of history coming behind them. prime time. Click. We're gonna do another interview about okay. that. But we can tell you, Nation was uh man, Nation was special though. You know, uh, shout out to Q Smith. Q Smith is is the one that brought Nation to me. Like I remember mm -hmm. one day I was at the Mosaic. Uh, I had this little double floor suite, and I and I and I'm and I'm up there recording some music. You know, Q Smith pull up on me, and uh, he had these two little niggas at the door. Like they young at this mm -hmm. time. They still in high school. That's they, in Houston, they, right? Uh -huh. Mosaic. That's in the Houston. Nah, nah, that's out here in Dallas, in downtown. You know, uh, they pull up and it's these it's two little students, bro. They come, I think they went to Duncanville. See yeah, here or Duncanville? Yeah, yeah. Anyway, they there, and, 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 and I'm just like, these. I liked them right from the <laughs> jump because they were, they just had their own lingo. They yeah. had their own lingo. They was young. They were just, they was just, they was different. You know what I'm saying? It was wild. I thought they was funny. I just used to <laughs> laugh at everything they did. They, they still just a, funny. I thought yeah, they, they, were just, they were just a wild concept to me. Just the what the concept of Young Nation was a wild how just they were. So long story from that day, I mean, they really they kind of started living with me right then. You know what I'm wow. saying? We, I had the studio, so I would just put them in the boot. You know, they were going to make a whole lot of songs. They made like club rap. Right then, they just started making, they were just making hits. Q Smith was, uh, you know, uh, he the one, he was telling me about them, but I really wasn't taking them serious until they came. And then I was just like, hey, let me see what these little niggas got. You know what I'm saying? And they had to put them in the boot. And they, 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 could, they the type of nigga, they can just rap all day, all night type shit. Like, you know what I'm saying? I'm more strategic. I'm gonna do a couple songs. I'm gonna get out, you know what I'm saying? Boom. So the, the, the crib was theirs. They come. They come, I come back, they got mixtapes done. They were just some workaholics, but wow. they also were just some kids rapping. And uh, I just took a liking to them. You know That's what I'm saying? Hard. I took a liking to them. 
did a deal with them, you know what I'm saying? Gave just I just I just I just saw what I saw and I was happy that I Gave did. It. And, I, and I combined with Q Smith and DJ Merrick at the time. They was the one that was really facilitating Young Nation and they brand and really even to this day, you know, shout out to Q Smith who who do a good job with a lot of different artists, but he did a real good job with Young Nation, really just helping them grow. Mm-hmm. Cause shit, I had to take them man as they weren't even artists no more. They became like brothers. You yeah, know what I'm saying? Yeah. So like you can tell that, when you talk about yeah, it. Yeah, it was different, you know. But Q Smith really cultivated like they brand and did a whole lot of, to really turn Young Nation into what it became. You know what I'm saying? And they already and they had their own movement. They already had their own shit going on. They had their own look down. They had a whole lot of stuff going on. So it was a combination, of a lot of stuff. And I just used to have fun with them. We'll do tracks with them. That was a chance for me to actually go into a mode of having fun making records, uh, more more so than you know being so serious and strategic making records. So I just used to have fun making music with them too. They <laughs> on the album. They on the album right now. Yeah, they oh, yeah. The, yeah, they on the Star Baby album. Oh yeah. yeah. We, so yeah, we back working and everything. Let me ask you a question. So okay, so you did that with them. I can imagine because you've been in business so long. How many people or how many other rappers actually come to you for knowledge or for help or to try to help sign them or help them get a deal or so forth? Does that happen to you very often? Oh yeah. All the time. That's another reason why I made the Star Baby album because this is what I learned over time. Like I started and I and I really it came full circle. I, I get a lot of artists overall, but of course the most I get is gonna be artists from Texas mm-hmm. and Dallas and this everybody I meet people everywhere I go. Uh, you know, uh, before I came here, I was getting my hair cut. I was coming down the stairs and I met some people, some artists. We were talking about music, but I I can't, I don't got to the point where now I'm. I'm pretty much telling everybody the same thing because it's it's the real answer. It's like the problem has been when it have came to Dallas artists and everything in Texas artists is that we got away from our culture. Mm-hmm. That's it. That's all. You got away. Everybody that's been trying to make it and put money into it. You 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 got a uh, sixty to seventy percent more chance of success by really embracing the culture. Mm. So. That's what I tell everybody, and I'm like, okay, I'm gonna be an example of it too. I'm gonna make a whole project to show y'all what I mean on how I'm gonna do it in my own way. But I, obviously, everybody can do it in their own way. And the best example I can use right now from an artist that's doing it in their own way is Big Ass the Plug. Yeah, right. you Definitely. know what I'm saying. That, so Definitely. it's just really, I'm, I, I use him as an example. I'm saying him because that's what I've been. That's what I mean when I say like that's all you gotta mm-hmm, do. Mm-hmm. Uh, that's not all you gotta do. Obviously, you gotta be talented. Big Ass <laughs> the Plug, he talented. You gotta be talented, but you got a better chance. It's, it's niggas I done seen that can have and should have easily made it. Mm-hmm. Can make it. But they're they're they doing the wrong stuff. You know what I'm saying? It's not that they don't got the talent, it's they don't realize that the world needs to identify you first. You know what I'm saying? And some artists is just they're not everybody from Dallas and everybody takes don't gotta be a t- you don't gotta be that. But I'm telling you, it's ways to use the culture for your benefit. Yeah. It's already been built up by the ones before them. People like myself and everybody that came before me. I, I use the culture that the people I just named made, right. you know what I'm saying? Swish House, DSR, Flip. Lil Flip, mm-hmm. SUC, uh, 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 everybody that didn't came, Mr. Luch, everybody that came out of Dallas, M- Big Chief, everybody that done made some type of splash. We all, you, it's smart to go, because that's what any other city did. Atlanta is big because they, they been piggybacking like they should the whole time. And it, it go, that shit go way back to mm. fucking Ray Charles. <laughs> like it ain't even just rap. It's that, that industry in Atlanta been building for way before way, rap. Right. But we got that here in Texas. So, you know, Do that's you, my thing to tell um, you. Are you like, cause I know just like when I was asking you about, you know, people coming to you and so forth and asking for help. Have you ever been like a silent partner in um, helping any individuals um, with their business? I was gonna ask you about your business ventures because you're a pretty sharp old boy. So I know uh-huh. already you you know a lot, you know. So yeah. you ain't just out here being yeah. college degreed up and all kind of stuff and don't understand business. Like who what does the role uh, you know invest in these days? What right. what's a, yeah. what do I need to do? Yeah. I need to buy some bitcoins or yeah. what So I you know, yeah, so to answer your question, yeah, I have been some Real solid partners and some different mm-hmm. things that, you know, the man been successful business wise. Okay. Uh 
what I've learned more and what done fulfilled me and made me more happy is actually now, cause now like I, I keep using the word full circle because I keep coming back full circle to the music. So now I'm finding everything that's attached to music where I can make money even if it's on the business side because this is where I'm most happy is exactly. at. You know what I'm saying? See, it don't really matter. You, you, you gonna go harder, be more successful in something you actually wanna do. Love. You know what I'm saying? That's why, I, that's why I rap. Like at the end of the day, my goal now, my whole goal from here is to find a way to like people think that over the years we always thought and I thought this too I thought it was it was it was the, the goal was to do a lot of things and make a lot of money but what if you could do one thing and make that same amount of money mm. that's my goal it's now. a lot easier a lot easier a lot better <laughs> a lot funner my goal is to translate that back to me to what if I can make everything that if I instead of doing 10 businesses what if I can make everything from music this and I can make the, make it make all make sense I can make these same things obviously it's different things I gotta do different things but that's where music. I'm most happy right. I said that's where I where I, that's where I'm more fulfilled at that's where my experience is at that's where I know I can be for that's a mm -hmm. that's a world I know and a world I love so the full circle moment is coming back into that like okay because the music industry is way bigger than what people think the shit is big like and it's a lot of money in this shit uh even though people try and say differently that's why you got all these uh, labels because they making there's so much money in it so the, the goal is to put it out into the world that it ain't no money in music to so you can make all the money that's how the labels but then, did collectively but then there's a lot of money in it but then you have to have the knowledge and a good team to be able to know how to acquire that money exactly. and have exactly. the paperwork together exactly. because as i said earlier off you know record the fact that as i learn about this business it's very shysty yeah. it's very you know and I'm not even in the business, yeah. but when I hear about all these different stories and how people can get messed out of money and how people are two faces, like there's no, are there any real people in this business? So to Man, say. To be honest with you, this is what I learned. You, it, it come back to the artists. See, the music industry is called the music industry or the music business. So the music gotta come first and the music is made by the artists. So that's why you see in the end of the day, the best businessman in this music industry end up being the artist, Jay-Z. Rick Ross, the, 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 it, it has that, that's got to happen more. So us artists got to become the businessman mm -hmm. because we're going to know how to treat it better. See, what happens is when you get a lot, or people who's in the music industry that understand it, like a boss talk, y'all in the music industry, because this is what we're doing right now. People like us got to be the, the people that's behind it because uh, otherwise you get a lot of people who ain't attached to the culture, don't really care about it. They just know that they can make money from it mm -hmm. and they making all the big decisions so they don't got no true passion that's for right. it. And, and you know what I'm saying? And like so that. when you really in it, it's hard to be shy. See, even as a real artist, like once you done went through the stuff you went through as an artist, it's just almost impossible for you to be a certain type of way, especially if you make it when you start going to business because you know how to artists think you know how everybody feeling everybody thinking so you know you you deal with it differently but a lot of the music industry has built been built in the past over people who ain't been attached to the music industry That's like real. that so they don't got real love for it they don't got real love for the people they don't got real love for the culture they don't got real love for the artists they're for the business going they don't give a fuck they making money for they families to have a a, a, a <laughs> beach home somewhere and they don't they have no connection to the people who are actually doing it so they just gonna figure out ways to finesse the people that's doing it and it's been a lot of that over the years so right. that got to get wiped out and washed away then you we can extract and do the business the right way you know what i'm saying so that's yeah. that's, that's a long quote we'll have to do a whole interview <laughs> on that because i could go all day on that but you know in a nutshell that's what it is i'm gonna circle back to the music one time man so kevin gates man he always deal with certain texas uh, artists like yeah. have you ever worked with Kevin yeah. Gates man Kevin Gates got a record man we just uh, man Kevin Red Gates I <laughs> one year at Austin when Kevin Gates was first coming and he wasn't even out yet really yeah man we was going somewhere I met with DJ uh, Earl your boy DJ of, Earl yeah yeah uh, we was somewhere in Austin and then we was walking to meet Earl and it's this nigga that's just walking up. He, I guess Kevin Gates had just got out of jail or something. He's just walking up. He down there walked past us and he down there moving us out the way. Like he, boom, he, on, he, he in a whole mindset. We're like, who the fuck is this nigga? So we go in there, he in there with DJ Earl, Earl your boy. And then Earl introduces, like, oh, this bro. He like, oh, boom. And we locked in. Man, we got cool. We did a record and everything. We, he came to Dallas. You know, uh, that he was another nigga I locked in with early, super early. You know what I'm saying? Uh, 
And I'm pretty sure if I reached out to Kevin Gates today, we could probably get some work in. I just don't be, my, I be in my own world, bro. I know, you know it. I already, I can look but at yeah, the moves. I see he, how you are. he was one of them ones that, once again, is certain artists that we just connected. Just another nigga that was like that with me was Dolph. Man, Dolph just locked in. You know what I'm saying? R.P. Dolph. R.P. Dolph, Dolph my dog. You know what I'm saying? How did you so meet like, Dolph? Man, man, Dolph met in Atlanta. You know what I'm saying? Uh, I like, the way I met Dolph, Dolph is my favorite way to meet an artist. Like, we met in the grind. Like, so, uh... DJ Holiday had a club popping. He had a birthday party. He had everybody coming through. If you, if you was an artist, you had to go fuck with it. You know what I'm saying? It was. I can't remember what year it was, but it was. It was before Dolph was Dolph. I, I mean, before he was Dolph. Yeah, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. And uh, we go. I'm. I, I go in the club. You know, I'm one deep. He one deep. Uh, we 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 trying to get through the crowd and get we 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 trying to fuck with DJ Holiday because that's what the, he wanted the artist. So we off in the crowd, kind of like just in the club, and we just chilling. It's so packed that we just stop. We don't even realize who each other is yet. Uh, I pull either I pulled out a blunt or Dolph pulled out a blunt, and that's what caught our attention. And then we saw each other, we acknowledged each other right there. And he knew who I was, I knew who, who he was because I was always paying against, I was always paying attention to the underground. Yeah. He was still, you know what I'm He's saying? Still coming up. And we locked in right then and there. And like from that moment, like we met on the blunt, we chopped it up, we was chopping up the whole time we was there because we was we both came one deep. We, he was coming from Memphis, I was coming from Dallas. But we was there to, you know, fuck with Holiday, get our music played, you know, doing all that type of shit. But we both in the club one deep, and we just chilling, like, kind of by the DJ boot. We just observing everything, but we just smoking the blunt, and we just talking, talking, changing yeah. numbers. And then that led to, you know, he coming to Dallas, we ended up doing music, shot videos, you know, we just, we just, so we kind of, it was a natural link. That's probably the most natural link I ever linked with artists, because, we was just there. He was just coming as an artist from Memphis to get on in Atlanta, and I was coming from an artist from Dallas to get on in Atlanta. That's and we was there by ourselves. We didn't have our teams with us or nothing. So, you know, we met genuinely like that, and then we locked in. Man, so, yeah. I guess when you, when you hear of Shorty Lowe, which you mentioned earlier, Dolph, like these guys, these these ones that pass on, like, and then you hear, like, the day you hear that Dolph uh, died or you hear – that Shorty Lowe pretty much uh, was in a car wreck. Mm. Man, that, that have to have an effect on you somewhat because you have a real relationship as far as knowing these guys. Yeah. A lot of people get on and post RIP and all that stuff, and then it's just a momentarily thing, but when you really have a connection with these people, it yeah. have to hit you a little different. Yeah, yeah, nah, for sure. You know, it was, it, 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 even to this day, like, uh, uh, somebody sent me a clip. Ammo 3. Yeah, oh, three dog. That was definitely my dog, man. See what I'm you know, saying? Uh, like, like all of it, it. it's just you know, I, I'm glad that I met these people, and I'm glad we did music because one thing about music, my favorite thing is that shit live on forever. Like, we can go get in the car right now and turn on Dolph, Nipsey, Three, Shotty Low. You know what I'm saying? And, 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 and I mean that's a when we really think about it, like that's a real treasure to have. And I I look at it from a standpoint where I actually know them, but I also know like who, who I also know that. They did what they were supposed to do. You know what I'm saying? And uh, instead of instead of being sad about it, I, and, and, and I, I rather celebrate it. You know yeah. what I'm saying? More more so. But yeah, I was definitely fucked up when you know every one of them. Nil three, lot. Dolph, Shorty Low. Yeah, you know I definitely and I still have my moments sometimes, especially when I hear the music and just think about you know some of the uh, the the experiences we experienced together. You know what I'm saying? And but you know, uh, they live. They long. They long live. They live forever. You know what I'm saying? Those. At the end of the day, I'm glad that I got to lock in with them. You know yeah. what I'm saying? And, I, and I'm always do whatever I can do to keep they legacy alive and just whatever little ways I can. The people gonna do it anyway. They they did enough work to where the people gonna do it for them anyway. Uh, you know what I'm saying? They yeah. all did some special work. You know what I'm saying? Every last one of them in their own way. So uh, you know, shout out to them for sure. Yeah. I got a question. So. Okay. Um, uh, you have you have sisters? Yeah, I'm I'm the youngest of eleven kids. Oh I got wow! Yeah, 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 I got I got a lot of sisters. You got a okay. big family. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. yeah I, I got can a imagine big family. Christmas. You know what? I thought yeah. you might have been the only child nah, or something. Nah, yeah, I'm the youngest child, but uh, yeah, but uh, <laughs> so nah, I come from a big ass family. <laughs> <laughs> so saying that, and because of the generation that we're in right now, 
You saw what happened to DC Young Fly's um, wife, wow. Jack yeah. Hill. Rest wow. in peace, yeah, yeah. Jack Hill. Wow. And, you know, not even just that, because whenever that happened, it reminded me of Kanye's mom. Mm. And, you know, as I said, the generation that we're in right now is all about superficial. It's all about your body for females and stuff. And then, like, I've always heard, like, my husband would tell me, you know, um, don't do that, don't do that. I like it natural. Yeah. Da, da, da. Yeah. Men yeah. don't always want no that. Real. They always say women who do that, they're doing that for themselves. They think that they're doing it for men, but they're really doing it for themselves. Hey, How do you feel? Is, is yeah, that true to you? Because, I mean, and I, and I can just speak from experience, like, the majority of the women I've always dealt with been natural. You know what I'm saying? And I don't got nothing against women. You know, I found some women that have done body work to be attractive, but it, it, it's definitely, the real going to always win. Like, it's different when you touching something real versus the other thing. Like, it's just different. I can I can mm -hmm. attest to that. You know what I'm saying? But at the same time, uh, 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 nah, it, it's just, it's just, I think the the that, that became the culture, and I think that was uh I think that was something that's been detrimental to the culture. People thinking that they have to look a certain way to appease whatever they're trying to appease, and and and, and what's even messed up is I know a lot of women that one thousand percent. You know how some people say you look good natural or without this, and they and, and they're doing it to compliment them. They say, but now nah, it's a lot of women that really look good natural, like for real. Like I know. I dated a girl one time. I went with a girl that looked way better natural, and and I wasn't even attracted to her when she would put makeup on. You mm -hmm. know what I'm saying? And these girls I dated, they okay, you, they look attractive either way. But it's some girls that that the the whole thing when you do that, it it, it makes you less attractive because you're so natural, you're so fine natural, you look so good natural. And that's when I started when I started. Uh, dating women like that and seeing that that's when I knew that the culture was really fucked up cause I'm yeah, like I, she really can't even see she really don't believe that when I would say that and tell her that she didn't even believe it Right. Genuinely, crazy. she genuinely didn't believe it. It's I was a lot like, of mental. It goes right back to mental health and yeah, exactly. um, how you value yourself and stuff like it's, that. And it has a lot to do with just like um, we talk about music. And I really feel like music um, affects our young kids because what they listen to a lot of times they emulate. So yep. it's just the same thing with, I think that with this beauty thing, it started with the TV. You see a lot of these actors and actresses doing surgery to look younger because the younger kids are taking away their roles and they're not getting enough. Yeah, yeah let you know me what just I mean? say, man, you know, the toughest thing for me with that situation is the fact of that she leave behind three kids and yeah, DC, that, yeah. DC Young Fly Man, have bro. to raise them kids bro. on his own and, and, and he was still having a relationship with her. He got to be going through some serious. Serious, yeah. And, and, and I just could only imagine losing you and having our kids and having our family and trying to fill those gaps that's going to be an uphill battle, man, any way you yeah. look at it. I mean, I thought long and hard about it. I felt bad for him. I prayed for him and his family. Yeah, mm -hmm. nah, same, same, man. Yeah. You know, and I want to send him out of, out, of, out of good energy in the world right. because that's a, that is, that's a real tough situation. Mm -hmm. Like, to have three kids with somebody, like, you know, uh, yeah, that, that's real tough. Yeah. I, you know, that's devastating at the end of the day. So, you know, I, hopefully he got a village of people around him, which I know he do, because that's what he going to need. Right. He going to need people around him to really, you know, fill those voids, and he going to need some time. And, I, you know, that's that's devastating. You know, when I saw that, I was, I was fucked up about that. I ain't going to lie. Yeah, the part yeah, that the yeah. part that um I, I want to say maybe, you know, comforted me a little bit about it, the situation, because I saw a post where Carlos Miller posted and said that, you know, he, DC Young Fly believes in God and he always motivate people and he always talking about God a lot. And I, I don't know him, but the fact that he knows God, mm -hmm. I was happy about that part because that will help put him through. You got to have something to comfort you. You know what I mean? Yeah, man. Thank you, man. And, and I'm on that note. Uh, did you get everything you were yes, doing? Yes, sir. All right, man. Um, say, man, what do you want? You, you, you a guy that I, I respect the most. Like, when, when it's all said and done, what do Duro want people to think of when they think of Duro music? Man, you know, uh, I, I want, I definitely want the music to lead the way for sure. I want everything that you know. And as as I'm growing as an artist and I'm creating new music, you know, I'm I'm gonna express more. I'm gonna give people more through the music. So whatever you know, I want people to grab grab everything out of that. You know what I'm saying? Because when I think about it, that's what I am first and foremost. I'm an artist. You feel me? And that's what I love being. And every I'm I'm other things for sure. I'm a whole lot of other things. But I think expressing it. I'll never be able to express it better than 
doing it through the music you know what I'm saying so I really just want people to appreciate that and value that because I put a lot of time in that but I also want people to know you know what I'm saying the person is just you know at the end of the day you know I'm a, I'm a, I'm a person that that you know come from a I want to say a strong will family you know what I'm saying and, and, and I came I came to do in great things for my family the world right. however you want to put it and I and I want I just want the music to lead the way. You feel me? I want people to enjoy the music because that's what I put it. That's what I do it for. You feel me? Like I do this for real. You know what I'm man. saying? And uh, that's that's really it, man. Star baby, man. Make sure you guys be on the lookout for it. It's coming your way, man. Yeah, man. Uh -huh. It's gonna be a hot summer, man. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Uh, 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 hey, we gonna get to it, man. It's it's uh, we at the beach. I'm taking my shirt off, y'all. Better not be out there. <laughs> <laughs> Yes, sir. Check Star it, baby. man. Star Thank you baby. so much, Duro, man. Yes, sir. Hey, man, we love you. As always, it's been another great segment of Boss Talk 101, where the bosses talk. And we out.